are ready to have some church today. Come on in. Come on in. Glory. Thus saith our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. You speak, and when he stops, I'll stop. How about that? All right. But y'all got to talk back to me today. Can you talk back to me today? All right. Our heavenly and eternal Father, we love you. We thank you. We appreciate you so much, God. God, I do not take this moment, this hour for granted, Father. God, all I want is to be used by you, God. God, I pray, God, that you will give me an ear to hear and a spirit to obey, God. These are your people. You know what we all stand in need of, God. And we understand just one word from you can change our situation. Just one word from you can heal us and deliver us. God. So we seek a word from you today, not from Kimberly, Lord God. So speak to us, Father God, and we will not fail to give you all the glory and honor and praise that's due your name. Bless Bishop God where he is right now. Use him in a mighty way, God. And we just say thank you, Lord God, for the relationship that we have with you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So today's topic is Flexibility. I see you, sis. Uh, uh, Letitia Jamar, good morning to you. Flexibility of the Holy Spirit. Flexibility of the Holy Spirit. There is nothing worse than being stiff. There's nothing. Have you ever gotten out of your bed and you cannot hardly move? It takes you a while. You have to sit there and collect yourself, <laughs> gather yourself up, and it takes a while, and then you try to move, and you're so stiff. You know, but today, we're talking about the Holy Ghost, because the Holy Ghost is not like that. The Holy Ghost is very, very flexible. Now, there are three scriptures that um, we want to focus on today. The first one is Genesis, uh, Lyndon King, favor of my life. Well, good morning to you too. <laughs> the first scripture is Genesis 1 and 2. So here, we, we want to we focus on the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit is doing, okay? The operative word here is doing, all right? So Genesis 1 and 2 says this. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Two says, and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And here we go. And the spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the water. Anytime the Holy Spirit begins to move he is interested in bringing about change. All right. Luke 4, 18 is the second verse uh, that we want to focus on. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of the sight of the blind to set at them liberty, them that are bruised. So again, we see the activity. We see the movement of the Holy Spirit. Anytime the Holy Spirit come, a change is in process. Now the question is, is will you allow this change to occur? Keep your eyes focused on the Holy Spirit. Matthew. Four and one is the third verse. It says, The Spirit of the Lord led him into the wilderness. The Spirit of the Lord led him. In, we're talking about Jesus here. Well, why would the Spirit lead him into the wilderness? May I just propose to you today that your wilder, all of your wilderness experiences are not from the devil. All of your wilderness experiences are not demonic. 
But may I propose that your wilderness experience is necessary, that it is conducive for your spiritual maturity and growth so that you can be rooted and grounded in him so that you will not be tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Your wilderness experience is conducive and it is necessary for you. It's necessary for you, and it's been strategically designed for you. I can't go through what you go through. My experience, my place in God is different than what yours is, so ours is different. That's why we cannot compare our lives to one another. Mark Twain says that uh, comparison is the greatest thief of joy, so we dare not compare our life's journey with anyone else because the Spirit will live us into our own wilderness experience so that it can smooth out some rough edges in our life. Come on, y'all. You know we got some rough, <laughs> you know we got some rough places in our life. You know we go off when we don't mean to go off, say things we don't mean to say, do things we don't mean to do, but then we see the activity of the Holy Spirit in these three situations and how he comes about to bring about change, flexibility of the Holy Spirit. Now, these three events refers to the activity and again, the flexibility. In other words, the Holy Spirit, hey, he's able to do whatever needs to be done whenever it needs to be done. He can do whatever, whenever. This is the flexibility of the Holy Spirit. So the definition of flexibility is the quality of bending easily <laughs> without breaking. You know you wake up so stiff sometimes or try sitting just a little too long. You feel like when you stand up, uh, uh, several things will break. <laughs> you hear things popping, all that stuff, because you sat too long and our bodies will get stiff. But flexibility is the quality of being able to bend easily without breaking. Now, some people are very constricted in their thinking patterns. They cannot easily switch gears in their mind. They need ample time to process. <laughs> you know anybody like that? Don't say it out loud. They need ample time to process. They lack spontaneity. They can't do things at the spur of the moment. But the Holy Spirit is not like that. Whatever situation you have going on in your life, the Holy Spirit there is to meet the need. Because he's able to be everywhere at the same time working on various situations. He, he's not limited like we are because the Holy Spirit is very flexible. He can bend without breaking. Flexibility, being mobile in the Holy Spirit, bringing about change. How many of you need some change in your life? How many of you need change in your mindset? How many of you need change in your relationship? Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Come on. I'm talking about Holy Ghost. The difference in between worldly change and Holy Ghost change is the Holy Ghost change is more permanent. Yeah, we can change our situation temporarily with alcohol and drugs and sex, which start out as a cool breeze but ends in a hurricane of consequences. Flexibility of the Holy Spirit. So there are many aspects of the human life that the Holy Spirit is concerned with. Hallelujah. I want to go to Matthew 16, 5 through 12. These are aspects of the human life that the Holy Spirit 
is concerned with. So right now, we are talking about the mindset. The mind is a terrible thing to waste. It's with our minds that we serve our Lord. It's no wonder why the enemy attacks our minds so much. We cannot serve the Lord with a cluttered mind, with a confused mind, with a devastated mind. We can't serve our Lord like that. But we're talking about the activity of the Holy Spirit that is able to come in and bring about change. All right, so Matthew 16, 5 through 12 says, And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves? Because you have brought no bread. Do you not understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand and how many baskets you took up? Do you not remember that? Neither the seven loaves of the 4,000 and how many baskets you took up. How easily do we forget? 11 says, how is it that you do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread? That you should beware of the leaven, here we go, of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. 12, aha, here's your aha moment. Then understood they <laughs> how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of the bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. May I suggest or propose to you that you should never ever have yourself or people who are on your same level as your voice of reasoning. Can I say that one more again? May I propose that you do not, you should not ever have yourself or people who are, are on the same level as you as your voice of reasoning. It's insidious to take counsel with people who don't know any more than you do. I know I got some amens right there. Woo Come on now. How can you help me? And we're on the same level of understanding. Here are these disciples, and they're like reasoning among themselves. Well, what are you talking about? You know, we didn't take um, of the bread. It's like, I ain't even talking about that. You need to be around other people who know just a little bit more than you do. You need to ask the Holy Ghost to, to strategically place people around me that are conducive for my purpose. Someone who can catapult me higher and higher into becoming a better version of myself. You don't want to remain the same because you can't grow in status quo. Amen. Got some lights up in here. Amen. Lights. The flexibility of the Holy Spirit. He is able to meet you whenever, wherever you are in life. You can be down, 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 down in the valley low. But I heard, I'm reminded of the old song we used to sing when we were kids. Down in the valley where the green grass grows. Come on, somebody. It's down there where you, where you are supplied with nutrients. It's down there where you are nourished. It's down there where you are more attentive. It's down there where you press into the heartbeat of God. It's down in the valley. It's not on the mountain. On the mountains where you celebrate after you've come through being in the valley. Whew. Have any of you ever had a valley experience? Can you testify it's because of that valley? That's why I can celebrate today. That's why I can say I have the victory today because of what he brought 
me through. Because if he brought me through before, I know that he will certainly do it again. And it's not predicated on the situation. It's predicated on my mindset, my perception regarding the situation. Woo, my Lord today. Hallelujah. Isaiah 1.18 says, Come now, let us reason together. You need to confer with the Holy Ghost. You got to confer with the Holy Ghost. You got to quit running here and running there and seeking a word and seeking a prophecy. He, the Bible says, come now, let us reason together. Can you get in my face? Hallelujah, because in my face, you're going to receive revelation. In my face, you're going to receive impartation. In my face, you're going to receive direction for your journey. You can't get it when, when you uh, confer in people who don't know any more than you do. Glory to his name. Come on, y'all. Yes, if he did it before, he will sure enough do it again. Oh, yes. Yes, he will. Hallelujah. See, we have to be careful because we become who we hang with. You become who you hang with. You start talking like them. You start walking like them. You start acting like them. So we have to be very careful who we hang with. Because if you hang around messy people, you're going to get mess all on you. Yeah. I'm going to say it one more again. If you hang around messy people, you're going to get mess all on you. If you hang around people with character and integrity, the same principle applies. See, we seek information. We live in a world right now where we want information and we want the knowledge. But the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, that flexible Spirit is trying to impart revelation. There's a difference in information. You can get all the information, but if you don't have the revelation connected to the information, then you really don't have much. To allow God, the Holy Spirit, to breathe on the information that you have received. Woo. The Spirit reveals things to us. It searches the deep things. See, you can't go according to your own carnal mindset. Our minds are so finite. They're so temporal. We remember today, we forget today. <laughs> we remember one minute, we forget the next minute. We cannot depend on our own minds. We can't trust in this right here. But the Holy Spirit searches the deep things. The Holy Spirit knows exactly what you're going through. As a matter of fact, the Holy Spirit knows the root issue of why you're going through what you're going through. See, you thought it was just because that man walked out on you. But the Holy Spirit is saying, no, you really have daddy issues. Woo! Come on, y'all. We got to get connected to the source, which is the Holy Spirit, because he searches the deep things. Hallelujah. The flexibility of the Holy Spirit. And see, instead of us searching here and seeking there and trying to get a prophecy and trying to get a word, the Holy Spirit will tell you those things that are to come. But it's much easier to go and just hear another word instead of tuning into the Holy Spirit because this takes a consecrated lifestyle. This takes you to forsake your own ways. It takes self-denial. Hallelujah. We have to get back to closing the door and getting into the face of God so that the Holy Spirit can reveal, breathe revelation inside of us so that he can tell us what step is next. He already said in his word that I am a light, a lamp unto your path, and a light, a lamp unto your feet, and a light unto your path. 
So he is the way. He is the way. All these other sources out here are a way. All of these other sources that are out here in this new age area, they are a way. But I want to tell you about someone who is the way. Come on now, there's no counterfeit here. They may have some power, but our God has all power. So why not tap into the source? Glory, hallelujah. The Holy Spirit will guide you. He will lead you because he is interested in your life. He's interested in who you are. You have been adopted by his spirit into the royal family. So the Holy Spirit is interested in who you are. It's not for, for any type of ill will or gain. He is, he is uh, uh, honestly, genuinely interested in who you are as a person. Because who you are as a person speaks to the glorification of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Who you are should bring glory back to the Father. So the Holy Spirit wants to do a work inside of you. Yes, he wants to smooth off uh, rough places in your life. Yes, he wants to take out everything that is not like him. But guess what? He needs your participation because the Holy Spirit is a gentle spirit. He will not barge in on you. He wants to do a work. He wants to take you and make something beautiful out of your life, but he can't do it without your, uh, uh, without your permission. He needs you. He wants you to be that clay on a potter's wheel because in his mindset, he already knows who you are to be, but you got to go through the process. And we can't stand the process. We don't like the process of life. We don't like the hurdles that are on the journey. We don't like the twists and the turns. We don't like the disappointment. We don't like none of that stuff. We don't like the process. We just know that we want to arrive at the destination. But God is saying that you can't just arrive at the destination. You got to go through the process. It's in the process where you're going to gain your strength. It's in the process where you're going to become that person of integrity. It's in the process where you're going to be that person and, and develop character here. All of those lies that you used to tell is in the process that they should be getting less, less, less. All that fornicating that we've been doing you know, through the process, it should be getting less, less, and less. You got to go through the process of life. Because the Holy Spirit wants to do a work. I dare you to say, make me and mold me, oh God. Yes, uncomfortable leads to breakthrough. Absolutely. But as a people, we're not comfortable being uncomfortable. But with the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is a comfort. He will comfort you because you're never alone in any situation. You are never alone in any situation. You are never alone in any situation. I don't care how dark the situation is. I don't care how uncomfortable the situation is. You are never, ever alone in any situation. Woo! Flexibility of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit wants to have an intimate relationship with you. He likes the intimacy. He wants to be close to you. He doesn't want you seeking his hand. He wants you to seek his face. When you look at a person's, person's face, you can tell so much about them. When you look into the eyes of someone, you can see how they're doing how they're getting along, 
what they're going through. When you look at the countenance of another person, you can feel what they're going through. God is saying, that, seek my, if you seek my face, my hand comes automatically. Learn my voice. So no other will you follow. Yes, in this new age, there's a lot of frequencies out here. What channel are you tuned into? There's a lot of frequencies. There's a lot of frequencies going on in this new age stuff. And even the very elect of God shall be deceived. You got to have an ear to hear. The scripture says that my sheep know my voice. And I know them. And they follow me. So the operative word is to follow. And then he says in John 10, uh, 28, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. We don't die. We don't die. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Energy can't die, right? We just get transformed. Come on, y'all. That's a whole nother subject there. So it says, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, ne neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. But the key is that you have an ear to hear and a spirit to obey. Whose voice? Is it the voice of media? Is it the voice of these uh, uh, mediums? No. My sheep hear my voice because my voice is very distinct and they know my sound. So when they hear me, they follow me. He says, if you love me, then you will keep my commandments. So it's, it's with the, the mind. It's with the mind that we serve the Lord. But you know what? We're doing all these detoxes. We got to detox the mind. Because some of us have been so infiltrated. During this time of pandemic, all we've been listening to is a lot of negativity. Coming in through your ear gates. Coming in through your mouth, through your eye gates. A lot of that. We got to detox our mind so that we can serve the Lord. And we need to cut folks off that perpetuate ignorance and stunt your growth. Remember I said before that you become whoever you hang with. So sometimes you just have to kind of cut people off if they are not conducive for who and how you want to be in this world. And then the Holy Spirit is certainly concerned with our heart. We understand that the heart and the spirit is used interchangeably in the scriptures. John 14 and 1 says this, and especially in these last of the last evil days where so much is going on. He says in his word to let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. So we know that God is not a man that he should lie. So we can depend on God and his word. We can depend on the power of the Holy Spirit that is there to comfort us. So let not your heart be troubled regardless if it's financial issues, sickness, or loneliness. It does not matter because Romans 8 and 26 explains that the Holy Spirit bears up all of our infirmities. So infirmities is just physical or mental weaknesses, but we have the flexibility of the Holy Spirit that is there to meet us, to help us, to comfort us, no matter what all that we go through. So God is not so much concerned about your environmental issues so much so that he is uh, concerned about your house because th your body is the dwelling place of the Holy Ghost. And we understand that God does not want to dwell in an unclean temple. We got to detox our minds. We have to get our hearts right so that the Holy Spirit can take up full residence within us. We know that he is concerned with circumstances. You can ask Peter who was walking out there on the water. 
when he was doing just fine as long as he had his mind on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But when he began to look around at the circumstance, he began to see Black Lives Matter movement. He began to see the pandemic. He began to see uh, governmental uh, distress and dysfunction. He began to see all of these things going on around him. And Jesus reminded him, you got to keep your eyes stayed on me because he will bear you up in the midst of your situations. How about the woman at the well? We know she had family. She had relationship distress. Can I get an amen right there? The woman at the well, she had all kind of distress going on. And that is some of us. Maybe it's not all with men. Maybe it's an issue with your mother. Maybe it's an issue with your child. Maybe it is a relationship issue. Hallelujah. But God is saying, don't even worry because I have come to deliver you. My Holy Spirit will bear thee up. My Holy Spirit will comfort you. The Holy Spirit raised Lazarus from a dead situation. It may appear that things around you are dead. It may appear that your marriage is dead. But when the Holy Ghost comes in, remember that's that, that this, that the Holy Ghost comes to bring about change in your life. We got to invite the Holy Spirit in. And after we invite him in, we want him to feel welcome. Hallelujah. So God cares about every aspect of your life. But you got to allow the Holy Spirit to do a work inside of you. You got to be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, lead me and guide me in all that I come to do because I don't want to be lost and I don't want to be wandering around in the wilderness unnecessarily when I can already go to my destination. So we give God glory. We give him honor. We give him praise. I thank you all for tuning in today and bless Bishop Bozeman's uh, heart for having me stand in his stead. Uh, God bless you. Do not forget that we are on Givelify. If you want to pay your tithes, make a donation. Givelify.com. You can give there. Don't forget, we are also on YouTube. Please subscribe there. And even today, share this on somebody else's timeline. Uh, Bible study will be Wednesday at 7 o'clock. I love you all to life. Thank you for being patient with me and for listening to me. I love you immensely. In Jesus' name, I'm forgetting anything. One thing I want to do before we go, though, if you are not saved, huh, come on now. This is a time of decision. To decide means to cut other things out that are not conducive for you. So I have to take a moment to decide if I really want to give Jesus Christ a chance in my life. I've tried everything else. I've tried alcohol. I've tried men, women. I've tried it all. But I want to try. Make a donation. Givelify.com.